Welcome back to Six Picks Music Club, a music podcast for people who know the right way to load the dishwasher. And we are back. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much. It's so good to see you all again here today. Welcome back to Six Picks Music Club. I am Dave, and always with me are uh, my favorite people. We have Jeff. You better believe it. And Russ. Hey, man. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Yeah, so uh, we are real excited to have you back in the world of, of Six Picks Music. We've got a fun topic today, uh, some some good stories from from all over the world. But gosh, I'm way ahead of myself. What's our password? How do we get this door open? Is it lice, lice, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Lice, lice, maybe. Yes, yeah, it sure is. Come on in. Uh, don't share jackets, but please come on in. Have a seat uh, with enough space from from your other friends, listener. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. Hopefully this is dropping early enough that you're listening to it on your way to work and you still have time to fix it. So this is your reminder to, I don't know, go buy a cheesecake or something. and I know what we're going to do for Valentine's Day. We're going to go to the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> <laughs> they have everything, literally everything. You could get four pounds of fettuccine at the Cheesecake Factory if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the lunch portion, I believe. Yeah. Today we wanted to talk about songs that uh, kind of follow that theme of love and can't have love without loss, and so we wanted to see the other side of things there as well. So we've got three songs that have a, a, a love message that we're going to try to explain, and then three songs that have a, eh, just a not love, loss of love, sadness, or anger. That's what we're going to do. Tell us more about the origin of our password today. Jeff, why are we worrying about Lice Lice Maybe? It goes back a few weeks. We have long hair boys. When my kids first started getting pressure from their schoolmates to cut their hair to be a short hairdo, I was like, oh, you can't cut your hair to a short hairdo. And and then my oldest was like, well, why not? And I was like, because you're a long hair boy. So long hair boys have long hair. You can't, you just can't do it. And he was like, oh, okay. And, th- and that just made yeah. sense to him. So since then, he was just like, I'm just a different type of human. It's a, like, called a long hair boy. And that like just cut away all that gender pressure he was getting, just knocked it right on out. One byproduct of the long hair is that, you know, it takes, there's more hair care. There's lots of washing and conditioning of this thing. It's just a beautiful mane of hair. What's your brush routine like? So the younger one has straighter wispier hair so we don't even really have to brush his uh the older one has thick curly hair and so we do the wash and the condition and when the condition's still in we brush out the tangles and then do a hair dry and that's good enough i do that with my pubes oh yeah i know i straighten them because i don't like them to be curly so i like them just to hang flat and be wispy (laughs) like your younger son (laughs) genital situation is is basically cousin it from the uh adam's family it kind of looks like a hula skirt (laughs) down there well this has gone in a boring direction nobody cares how often i condition my kids here he was scratching his head for a while and we're like you just got an itchy head. Like, I have an itchy head, you know? Like, so sometimes it just gets itchy up there. I have allergies and other stuff. So, it just, I live with having an itchy head. And then my wife's head got itchy. The other kid's head got itchy. And then her sister, who is visiting us from out of town, her head got itchy. Oh, no, no. 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 They're all like, oh, it's got to be something in the water or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> I don't. Like, what's in the water? Like, itch powder from the Looney Tunes? So it didn't make sense. And then and then because my wife's pregnant, she woke up in the middle of the night one night during her pregnant insomnia and was like, it's got to be lice. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think about that, but that does make sense. So we were looking around on the worldwide interwebs, and there's a place that's called the lice squad yeah they do appointments <laughs> on any day of the week and we called and two hours later the five of us are at the lice squad there was a german woman and a serbian woman and they were both very sweet and it was a nice welcoming room 
and they started working on our heads and it was clear that our oldest had been with lice for probably over a month. Holy oh. shit. So he's the outbreak monkey. And how do they tell this? They tell by how many lice they pull out of your hair, right? And so the only way, there are a lot of misconceptions about lice, which I'm here to- Dispel. Yeah, one of them is that <laughs> they grow in dirty hair. Not true. They grow in clean hair. They they like clean hair more than they like dirty hair. So it's not a hygiene-ish. Another thing is that people with long hair, women and long hair boys, get lice more than short-headed people. And if you're bald, you don't really have to worry about it that much. The only way to get rid of them is to scrape them out. There's nothing that kills them. You just have to comb them out of your hair. I thought you could kill them and then you have, but they don't leave. You have to like then comb them out. No, they give you this like enzyme that you mix with conditioner and then they, they paint it into your hair and it sits there and the enzyme loosens their bond to your hair. Cause they're like, hold not. They, they want to be in there. Right. So they have sticky legs and the enzymes basically break down the stickiness and so then they're just like free floating and they're like, what's going on? I can't grab onto this slippery piece of hair. That's a, that's my lice leader. Your lice leader is Mr. Magoo. Everybody listen up. The hair has gotten extra slippery today. So just do your best to hold on until things dry up. Yeah. Um. But what they don't know is that you're going to come in with a fine tooth comb where all of the bristles are touching each other and she just rakes it out. Right, right, pulls yeah. that hair slick back. It looks like you're getting like a shellac in your hair. Yep. And yep. then uh, she's just pulling out little bugs and their eggs. And then she shows you how many were in your hair because she's scraping them off into a paper towel. And it's like, you're like, mm -hmm. oh my God, that's a lot of bugs that were in my hair. Those are <laughs> organisms that were living on my skull. Yeah, isn't that so weird? Well, hold the phone, Jeffro. Uh, we just had an email come in over the wire. I think uh, the Toronto Board of Health, are you familiar with them? Yeah, there are good know. people there. Yeah, of course. There must be a thing going on in Toronto. Like, lice must be blowing up. They've got, uh, they've done a partnership with the Advanced Society for uh, Obliging Lice. Um, Azel? Azel. 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 As all. Yeah. Uh, so they partnered with them and they have a new a new campaign they're trying to roll out just because there's a lot of lice in the area and uh so yeah here it goes we here at the advanced society of obliging lice understand that in the past lice have been seen as an inconvenience a pest or even a hygiene issue and we are here to tell you that is not the case we are here for community and building families we want to be part of your entire family we want to build a world where lice are accepted when you think about it it's really just a mild tingling sensation not much worse than you'd get using selsun blue will also make you appear more philosophical as you scratch your head pondering the vastness of the universe we're here we will bite you but we're still your friends we're head lice not the one that rhymes with frabs that's uh really nice of those lice to contact us and offer that public service announcement. I mean, there are a lot yeah. up here and uh, and I don't think that they should be exterminated personally. Yeah, no, I think I'm officially changing my thoughts on uh, moving to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into our tracks about love and not love. So Russ, why don't you kick us off? So I'm concentrating on the beginning and ending of relationships tonight. My first pick is called Freak Machine by Fit for Rivals. It's a banger, dude. Dude, I'm like so stressed out about this person's vocal cords. It <laughs> rocks so hard. and She's freaking awesome. Yeah, it's incredible. She's screaming. Yeah. I just, yeah. I hope that they last so Freak Machine is this high octane rock song that just explodes with energy and angst. It's got driving guitars, pummeling drums, and vocals with raw power. It's also pretty catchy. This song is about lust, like right at the beginning of a relationship, when you can't keep your hands off the other person. You've got lyrics like, 
you're hotter than a fever and you got me shaking down to my knees. And there's also when you got your hands on me, you got me tongue tied, so hypnotized, I can't shake you off no matter how hard I try. But there are also glimpses of it already being toxic. In two different verses, she mentions getting the runaround. So in the end, it's probably not ending well. Freak Machine is off their 2016 second album, the aptly named Freak Machine. The song originally appeared on an earlier EP in 2015 called Sugar. The band is led by frontwoman Renee Phoenix, who tends to drift to and from her different projects. She started Freak Machine Records to have a central location for them. Her voice reminds me of a more intense Brody Doll from The Distillers. You guys know the story about Brody Doll and Josh Homme? What? Yeah, they have kids together. Homie. H- Homie? Is it Homie? Homie? I thought it was Homie. How do you say it? We need to have a meeting. All rock fans get together and decide how to say that motherfucker's last name. <laughs> Honestly. I think it's Homie. I think it is. He can't go walking around and say, my name is Josh Homie. Like <laughs> Homie, though. <laughs> What is, is Hame? I don't know. It sounds like a type of cheese. <laughs> hey, uh, we got a great spread here. We got some feta. We got some, uh, we got a weird pimento dip. We got Hame and just your standard cheddar. I think we know who we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so from Queens of the Stone Age, right? Yeah. <laughs> Josh Hame. Yeah. Um, they have kids together, uh, him and Brody Dahl from the Distillers, and that went okay. ultra toxic, right? He ended up getting a restraining order so she couldn't see the kids. Ew. It is oh. it is a crazy story I'm not going to go into, but you, if you have time, I would look into it because it's wild. Sounds super uplifting. Yeah. <laughs> is there heroin in this story? <laughs> <laughs> Russ, I don't think so. It's the Russ signature. Everybody's gonna die of heroin at the end. Oh, yeah. you know what? I don't. I don't think I have that problem this week. I don't have a, oh. a heroin problem this week, so that's good. Finally. Anyway, Freak Machine was the last Fit for Rivals LP, but they've been putting out singles since 2020 again, and so I'm hoping that there's a third album at some point, but I'm not quite sure. There's bits of the song where I feel like a, a person that they, they dated before that they can't get over, and so like when they see them, they, they still have these feelings, and, and they can't... like. They haven't gotten past this relationship yet. It's still, yeah, they're still very attracted to this other person. What if the whole time she was trying to date, she screamed in that voice? To the person, it would just be like, she shows up on the Tinder date, she's like, I'll have a burger. And you're like, oh my, this is a lot. I do like her though. This is cool. No, but it reminds me of Screaming Females, the gal who's the front singer for them. And and she's got kind of like almost like a like a rush voice a little bit. Oh, so. a, a Getty Lee voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just like real big. But you know, she's this real uh, sort of unopposing. Unopposing? Like she doesn't <laughs> oppose people? Yeah. You mean unimposing? <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> Do I have to grammar edit our whole effing podcast, dude? <laughs> that song really rocked, and and I. Had not heard it before, so thanks for bringing that one. What do you got for your second pick today, Russ? And uh, just as things begin, they also end. My second pick tonight is called F.U. by the Australian band Wax. Dude. I think I'm drawn to music with raw emotion. Yeah. It's a stark difference from what's going on in my life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't have a lot of uh, crazy things like that happening, so it's... It's kind of fun to to get in there. Yeah, sure. And I know all kinds of good music is made up of emotion, but the sweet spot for me are emotional punk rock bands, or at least bands with punk rock roots. And while I do appreciate slower songs and acoustic ballads, like I really want something with a driving beat I can dance to and a melody I can sing along to. I feel triggered. You tar- you targeted that at me and Dave because we both chose folky songs. Our songs are not. Not <laughs> rooted in... Well, that's not no. exactly true. Dude, but. I'm not trying to bust balls. I was just trying to get into the process of why I pick the songs I pick. No, it's a great song. It's like... I thought it was... Uh, like, is this... Do you listen to this while you're just in the backyard? Like, you have a barrel fire going and you're just beating it with an aluminum bat? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's yeah. like I listen to it and I'm doing the dishes or something. You yeah, know? and you're just like, but anyways, that's hilarious. Very mild mannered, going about your yeah. day and just <laughs> fuck yeah. 
I I like the chorus of this. It's like nobody hurts me. Fuck you. You got yeah. me all wrong. It's awesome. I like mm. I like I like yeah. people that are like you can't hurt me. That I am no, immediately it's like drawn the to the middle that. finger to anyone who's like tried to control or or belittle or limit you. Yeah, it's just raw anger, frustration, fast paced tempo, those crazy guitars. There's that really interesting like modulation when they get to the chorus. Kind of like elevates it, and you just oh wake up a little bit. Yeah, it's but, like it's uh, a fucking angry song, and it's got the dark yeah. hooky lyrics and uh, like I, a fucking kick ass chorus. Yeah, I mean I can get then lost. It's like, in it. but we're also a pop song, and we can do. <laughs> it's just yeah. like yeah, no, it's just a Bobby kind of thing. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a good one. I'm a huge fan of anyone that's saying fuck you to anybody. Like I'm a huge fan of them. Like just tear it all down. Like you owe nobody nothing. Like don't ever fucking answer to anything tear it all down yeah say fuck you all right so uh so front woman maz devita said that this song is a is about a situation with someone in your life who is taking advantage of you and finally having to acknowledge reality and stand up to them which is pretty much what we were just talking about and uh and she says she hopes it's, it's as cathartic for the listener as it was to write and kind of like sarah shook she's got that the maz has got that uh broken yodel you know Kind of oh, almost yeah. like a trill in her voice, which just sure. makes me think that she's just like when she's singing this, she's so angry that it's just uh, just her voice is trembling and she's like belting Warbling. out that uh, chorus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I bet they put on a kick-ass show, man. I yeah. Fucking, oh, I, I know. I'm, I'm waiting. Wild. I am waiting for them to come. I would. I... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, this song is off their 2019 album, Big Grief, which is it's a fantastic album. It veers from loud punk songs to easy ballads, and then they have like a hybrid called History that starts off easy and then just gets really loud by the end of it. It's great. Um, but all the songs, they, just, they all pack a punch. It's a great album. If you're at all interested, you should check it out. It's amazing. They're great. It's a great band. I love them. Great start to the Love and Sadness episode as we uh, uh, kick off with some really rock and roll stuff. Uh, thank you, Russ. Love your shit all the time. I'm going to jump in with my first pick. Uh, this is a band that released this album in 2023, just a year ago. They're called Wednesday. The album is called Rat Saw God, and it's, it's really, really, really awesome. My love song is from them off of this record, and it's called Chosen to Deserve. Yeah, man. So... That's the band Wednesday. So they're from Asheville, North Carolina. And on that track, you definitely get a twang. You get a little little Southern rock. I just really dig it. As far as a love song, I feel like it's pretty clear. It sounds to me like uh, this person is in a relationship that they are starting to feel like real feelings for this other person. And, uh, you know, they start off the song saying, we start with our best versions of ourselves. And, and you know, now that we're we're here like i'm ready to trust you in a different way i'm ready to like show you the real me and the confession vomiting of all of the worst things yeah Yeah. (laughs) of all the things that like they feel like they couldn't tell them before but i feel like it's a song about growing up it's about finding people to connect with that you want to be authentic around and uh i you know i think that's a pretty awesome awesome space did you read that quote that she gave to Pitchfork? She says, my older sister had left for college and I felt like I was getting the brunt of their financial stress. I was just really angry and hating my parents for not being able to just like let me live or whatever. I was dealing with it by doing the most drugs, having the most unsafe sexual encounters and experiencing the most trauma in my life. Yeah. She definitely airs it all out here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard this song on the radio, you know, we briefly talked about this, but months ago, and I just remember, I was, like, I immediately, I was like, pedal steel, rocking, weird singing. I'm, I'm so into this, you know? And it was like confessions about <laughs> yeah. doing too much Benadryl and watching things climb up the walls and then having <laughs> yeah. to have your stomach pumped. I'm so into the song. What is this? It's just right. like <laughs> rocking hard country song. Very cool. I actually first heard them on their one of their other singles that came off this record. Bull Believer is the is the track. It's a very different track than this, but like it's a real, real fucking banger too. You so. know what this kind of reminds me of a little bit? Have you ever heard of the band Y Oak? Oh yeah. 
Why yeah. Oak is yeah, all, yeah. they they came out. I guess it was like almost 15 years ago now. Oh my gosh, because uh, it still feels new to me. But it was it was like a pedal steel song with just like the chorus was just like <laughs> like it really rocked hard, and I was like, wow, what a combination of things. This is way better than combining country and rap. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was not a... That's still happening, dude. <laughs> Is That's it? still happening, yeah. yes. I saw oh. somebody... Pre- it was like at the college, Natty uh, pregame was a country rap artist. Oh, right, and so, right, and he's right. He's up there just being like, if I'm able to say this, just the whitest guy in the entire world. Like, it, like he must have <laughs> been from Utah, and he spent only spent time inside... And then he and then he had every kind of capri pant and cargo short available, and went out there. And, I'm gonna be a rapper, country rapper, oh, and it's no. like oh, I hate this so much. This has no soul. <laughs> it goes against every fiber of my being. So yeah, I uh, I I like this song. I like it for a love song. I think it's sweet. Yeah, and authentic, which I think is nice. I think that's important. That it's uh, it feels it feels very honest. That's important to Russ. It needs to be honest. It needs to be vulnerable, but it also it needs to um, be raw, raw, honest, vulnerable. Yeah, you know, I well, and I think that's what's great about it is that the singer is unflinching, like it very just like open about. Yeah, you know, I did some fucked up shit. Do you think that she's also unopposing, <laughs> <laughs> or is she like pretty opposing? Do you think? I'm about to unoppose you, dude. <laughs> dude, you are. When I go, you're gonna just waiting for me to screw up. Well, so yeah. Again, if you haven't heard Wednesday, go check them out because they're really great. They're uh, one of the uh, one of the better records of 2023. All right. Well, so switching gears a little bit into the song, not so much about love, uh, is another uh, artist who had a really great record this last year. Ooh, can I tell you how excited I am that you had two picks that were in this century? That's amazing. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Most of the picks I wasn't even born for, so this is awesome. I appreciate you pushing forward, man. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> I actually saw this gal play a show down at the Continental Club on South Congress, and it was awesome. It was the record release party for this record, and the song that I picked is by Jess Williamson, and the song is Hunter. <laughs> I like any song that's like it got piano like that, where it's just like beep 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 beep. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real percussive, purely on a musicality level. It like it just sounds beautiful. So kind of her thing. She's from the Dallas area, but then moved down to Austin and went to UT, and then she moved to New York. That's when she started pursuing this kind of playing music again. She played music her whole life, but then she thought about pursuing it as a real thing there, and then she moved back to Austin. And that's where she kind of started to release her own records, find her sound. And then about a year and a half ago, I think she moved to L.A. because, you know, she had gotten this momentum going. And then she wrote this record out there. And it's the whole record is kind of a breakup record. And this song is definitely one where I just feel a lot of that loss and disappointment that, you know, whatever relationship we were just in didn't work because, you know, I really liked you. And, you know, it sucks. And I, I have to keep going. I feel like she has a lot of feelings, desires, but it's not reciprocal. It's like a song about moving forward in a lot of different ways. Also, that one line, the, uh, the I want a mirror, not a piece of glass. Yeah. I do appreciate that line. I think it's just it's good writing in this song. Oh, yeah. No, she's a really good lyricist. I think she's a great songwriter. Another one of my favorite records of this last year. And certainly like getting to see her perform this album at the Continental Club was really, really cool. That's awesome. Well, so those are my picks, and Jeffro, you are last today. So I felt that it was appropriate for kind of the direction of our songs. We started out with this really high energy and kind of mellowed into my stuff, and now you're going to take us into a new direction. I have a different concept of love to introduce to you. You may not know it because you're a product of this Western tradition of romantic love where people are, oh, finding their other half, you know? You complete me. We're a circle or whatever. But there's a different kind of love that the Greeks talked about 
And I love, it's called Eros, my friends. And my songs are about Eros. First one by the Dandy Warhols off of the record, The Dandy Warhols Come Down, 1997. I love you. Dandy Warhols are from Portland, and they're an artsy band. They're led by a person named one of my favorite rock names of all time. You ready? Oh, yeah. Courtney Taylor Taylor. <laughs> Just genius. A hyphenated. Yep. Courtney yep. Taylor Taylor. Your writing partner, Peter Holmstrom, and then a uh, keyboardist who was really cool named Zia McCabe. They hung out with the Brian Jonestown Massacre for a long time. There's a movie that documents this era called Dig, if uh, nobody's ever seen it. It's one of the best rock documentaries of all time. Oh, it's so good. But this song, it's got things that I like musically. I like grooving, pulsing songs. I am generally into those, even if they don't go to a lot of places. Like So there's not a lot of variety in this song. It is, it is a hypnotic song that's about fixation and i think it works for the content of the song which is repeating over and over to this person or the object of his affection i love you i love you and then it's like you probably think i'm just too smart and weird for you but i'm actually kind of awesome is basically what he's saying <laughs> um and and my my shyness should just make you feel more secure so it's going to work out for us right um, but this is yeah, this song, all the way through this like really unhealthy fixation on yeah. the other person. It's like <laughs> completely yeah, unhealthy. Yeah. And it just keeps building and building live. This song pays off even more because well, cause you're going to feel that pulse, right? Oh, I bet. Yeah. Well, the pulse is like, yeah, it's, it's beating through you. That's amazing. I bet. Yeah. But they leave all that space. It's one of those songs that can drag out for a long time and then guitar solos can keep getting bigger and bigger and louder and louder. Oh, and yeah. it just keeps like, you know, it's like a really cool song. So that's like a, that's an edging song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This song I interpret to be about uh, Eros, which is the a, a Greek understanding of love uh, from ancient times. But their form of love was that was really that love is something that was obsessive and aimed towards a beloved. It could be an object or a person, but you feel you, you're you're so enthralled by the beauty of the object that it makes you virtually insane, which is stalkerish. It's creepy. It's psychologically disturbed. Obsessive. Now we want. We, you know, our interpretation of love is that it's meant to be completely reciprocated in, in a two-way street. But the truth is that there's another form of love that is parasocial. Like you have a feeling of love that is not like doesn't even register to the other person, right? They're only an object <laughs> in your mind and you observe them. And that's happened, I think, to a lot of people, certainly like everybody other high school person loved women in my case, but I loved them from afar and they didn't even know who I was. And that's, that's a form of Eros. And I think that this is a good embodiment of that because of the clearly obsessive quality, or it's meant to capture that obsession, which is this piece. Here's a hypothetical. What if Courtney Taylor Taylor ends up hooking up with Taylor Swift? Well, her name would be Taylor, 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 which is the best. <laughs> Actually, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor is an awesome band name. It's like name. Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Tinker, Taylor, 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 Soldier Spy. <laughs> That's the unabridged version of John LeCar's infamous novel. That's why you say his name? I don't know. John LeCar? How do you say it? <laughs> John Le Carré. Is that how you say it? Le Carré? Okay. I thought you don't understand how to speak French, mister. Well, I mean, I know more than zero about it, <laughs> John Le Carre. <laughs> All right. I'll give you that one. That's fair. <laughs> it's French for the car, dummy. <laughs> Yeah, fucking hell. So the fir the first side of Eros is the obsession, the fixation on the beloved object. The other side is embodied by my second song from Mazzy Star, 
uh, on a record, So That Tonight I Might See You from 1993. Um, and it's the other side of Eros. This is also a pulsing song, but pulsing in a different way. And the other side of Eros is you get you get the object. You, you get close to it. And it gives you the time of day, and it's not really what you want. Jeff really loves all pulsing songs. I guess since you're not introducing it, I will. It's called Fade Into You. Great job, (laughs) Jeff. (laughs) It has to be in the top 10 sexiest songs of all time. I mean, it's just, aren't your nips hard? Yeah. A little bit. Well, it's kind of, I'm a little cold. I'm in the garage and it's cold, but yes, they are hard. I have to admit, I've never really listened to that song with my bro <laughs> friends. Like, that's, I, I haven't done that. I've yeah. only listened to this song with people that I was attracted to sexually, uh, men and women. Um, you know, so like, but not you guys. Well, and, and listener, you, you should know that Jeffro maintained extreme eye contact unbreaking eye contact with us <laughs> as we listen to it because the title uses poetic inversion i screwed up the title of the record which is so tonight that i might see you i said it in the wrong i put the tonight in the wrong place but mazzy star were dave roback who was the guitarist and producer and hope sandoval and there are other members too but they were the main ones hope sandoval is the person that wrote the song and that you're hearing strum and sing um Goofily enough, uh, Google classifies this as alternative indie rock blues. There's nothing that's blues about the song, and even in the least bit. So, uh, Google, go back to school, okay? Be better, Google. Be better. Yeah, be better, Google. Um, but a lot of people misinterpret this song because it is sexy and because you think, I'm going to fade into you, my lover, right? And you're lying next to them listening to this song and and getting it on uh which is the way quite frankly i was introduced to the song so it, i you know have that that frisson that comes with that like you know the warmth of an intimate bed you had like a six cd changer in your bedroom and this was the <laughs> I, number dude, one I had CD exactly that, that when you i had that too when That's you funny. went and loaded up the incense burner with some patchouli <laughs> press play and <laughs> Yes. Turn around and dim the lights. Yeah. I know that trick. One of those CDs was Shaw Day, too. And I'm not even joking. <laughs> and one of them was Sigaros. Nice. But anyway, this song, a lot of people interpret it as a love song. Like, I, oh, we're loving each other. It's so sexy. But it's really about getting close to your beloved and realizing that there's a vacancy and that and you're you're fading into the person because there's nothing there and they're never gonna share. And and you and even if they do share, it's there's an emptiness. The s- smiles cover this person's heart, right? They're they're just all surface level. And so though she wants to fade into the person, there's not what she wants there, you know. And so it's really a song about it's strange you never knew because you di- you just don't have the depth to to understand my interest in you and why I think you're beautiful. And so it's never going to work. Or you're just not paying attention. Yeah. So there is part of this song for me that is like on that internal struggle where like she doesn't really know who she is in this relationship anymore. She's like, uh, it's this exploration of self. So she's like, uh, I wish I was a ghost. And and I think Fade Into You is more about uh, this desire to escape that reality or or maybe even just lose themselves in, in something else. Yeah, I think so too, but the the I, I think that's a good interpretation, but the thing that they want to lose themselves into isn't gonna work is it gonna work. The spiral of losing yourself completely to someone who's lost in a whole different way. I think one of the interesting things about Eros, have have you ever like been in love with somebody in your mind when you obtain the object of your affection and and I mean obtain loosely, like you're in a relationship or you got to hook up with the person or whatever it was. You suddenly go like, oh, not what I was really looking for. And then you prefer to go back to the state of affairs before you obtained their affection. (laughs) It would be better to just go back 
to when that never existed. You're like I liked you so much better before you gave me crabs. <laughs> <laughs> they also have a really bad marketing team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pubic lice, they have it even harder than hair lice, they for sure. They have it worse than hair lice, 100%. Sometimes, have you ever, like, you've achieved the object of your affection or you've, you've obtained it, and then you wish that you could just go back to the previous state when you were... Because the wanting was good? Yeah, it's like the chase. You you want the, the chase is the chases where it's at. No, um, but the thing that I think is really, really... Uh, awesome about this song is that it was everywhere. It was in like a million movies, a million TV shows, a million commercials. There's enough of ambiguity to leave it open to interpretation. And when people aren't really listening or they're just, you know, lighting the Nog Champa, you know, like uh, we're just, this sounds really good. It sounds really sexy. And, and now let's take off our shirts. Uh, they're an archetypal band. Uh, you know, they're from Los Angeles they dress cool. They look cool. The The guy playing guitar had shades on and he's a little bit older and has scruffy hair and a slick shirt. And she's beautiful and, and, and like representing youth and, you know, has like black army boots on with red hose, you know, and just like mm -hmm. up there right. strumming her guitar. And it feels like a coffee shop, but it also feels like a rock show. And it feels like yeah. being right in the middle of the 90s and being in the movie singles. And they get name checked by Red Hot Chili Peppers. And they just have a lot of like cultural significance, even though they had one hit. I mean, Fade Into You is their only right. song to most people. Yeah. But it's massive. It's a huge and important culturally and otherwise song. Let's dive into the uh, to the FAHQ. We are freaked, amped, and hyped for these tracks. New songs in our playlist, and we're gonna cue them up. So yeah, you can uh, you can link that from the show notes, and that is gonna be our fa cue, the cue of songs that we are freaked, amped, and hyped for. This dude Ty Siegel has a new record coming out called My Room, and there's a single out right now called My Room. There's like a a Clapton thing happening from like the George Harrison track, My Guitar Gently Weeps, and uh, I'm really digging it. So that's my that's my, that's my my song for the queue. Russ, what do you got? So I listen to this Dutch punk band called Tusky. They've got some new songs out uh, in preparation for their album, which is coming out in March. The song that I'm listening to right now is called Circles. Um, there's another one also called Lights Out, which is 56 seconds of ferociousness. Nice. And it's pretty fun. Big surprise that it's a punk band. Yeah, I think it should be called, if you're Dutch punk, it should be called Dunk Rock. <laughs> uh, okay, Jeffro, uh, what do you got? Take us home. The Kills new record, God Games, song 103. Hell yeah. Allison Mossart, we love you. I hope you're listening. She's one of my leaders. That's for sure. I did just want to say thank you to everybody who has uh, listened and downloaded and left us fun little comments or emailed us. Uh, this is our 10th episode, and um, it's been a lot of fun for us. I have a funny thing in that regard from Norway. A Norwegian listener said, I thought it said Six Dicks Music Club, and I got excited. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry, it's just... Three dicks so far, unfortunately. There are six balls. Thank you all again for supporting us. And if you want to listen to any of the songs that we talked about today, check the, the show notes for the Spotify link and uh, send us your picks. Uh, shoot us an email or something and let us know what you thought of ours and what you would do differently. Also, uh, check out our YouTube channel at Six Picks Music Club is the uh, YouTube uh, handle. We've got videos of all of our episodes, like little animated things. It's pretty fun, so go give that a check. This episode of Six Picks Music Club was produced by Lee Key Bum. Edited by Tess T. Coles. With special thanks, as always, to Dixie Wrecked.